In this video, we're going to cover contributing to multiple open source projects. No surprises there. But there's going to be a twist. Not only am I going to contribute to various Eddie Hub projects, but I'm also going to contribute to your projects. Yes, we're going to pick some of your projects and we're going to do it slightly differently. We're going to use Gitpod, a cloud ephemeral dev environment. No need to install a specific version of Python or Java or anything like that. You can just get started and it just works straight out of the box. We'll get more into that in a moment, but I know what you're thinking. Why Gitpod? I've been managing my local environment for so long without too much of an issue. Yes, but why not make your life easier? Make it better. We used to be fine without internet and now we can't live without internet. Before I explain the why, the hows, the whats, the benefits, let me give you a quick demo on the power we can have. Take our link free project, for example, that you can see behind me. If you want to contribute or review a pull request, you can with a click of a button. So in the readme, we have open in Gitpod. So you can get started straight away, contributing, everything's set up for you. You can get the app running in like 30 seconds without any config, literally click of a button. But the other beauty is if I want to review a pull request and I've got loads of files that I've changed locally, I don't have to stash them and do all that sorts of stuff. Again, we'll go into more details in a moment, but I can just, I want to review this pull request. I want to test it. So yes, I can see the file changes and it looks good. I'm pretty happy with those. But what happens if I actually want to see this working? Well, I can click opening Gitpod. So so if I click open in Gitpod, now straight away, it's going to open in Gitpod. It will ask me to log in with my GitHub account if you haven't done that already. And that's really straightforward, pretty standard OAuth stuff. And then it's building the environment for me, the exact environment that the project needs, the right version, any dependencies. There's no Mongo or anything like that in this project, but if you needed Mongo or anything like that, it would have it all built for you already. So let's give it a few seconds for it to get started. And here we go. I mean, this looks familiar to you, right? Just to, to show you, this is in the browser. This is in Safari. You can use Chrome, Firefox, any of your favorite browsers, and you can even do this locally. And I'll show you that later. You can do it locally with a VS code connecting to remote Gitpod. Yes, please open the browser. Let's have a look. It's going to give us a demo of the app. Here is the app running. And if I go up, you can see it's running in a temporary URL, temporary dev environment. So that is running. So I can make changes to that. So let's have a look. So let's just check. So the file that got changed in this pull request was public data. Let me make that a bit bigger for you. And then Jatin Kumar 30. So we could go here and have a look. So we can see we know we're in a patch and we know we're in a branch, which is in their fork and we're in OSS patch one. So if we look down here on the left, you've got OSS patch one. So Gitpod takes care of all of that for us. And then if we go to public data and it was Scroll, let me make that a bit bigger for you. Jatin Kuma, there we go, 30. So we have it. So we have their code. And then if we go to the browser, we can actually have a look how it looks. Jatin Kuma, here we go. So now if I click on this profile, this is what their data looks like. Perfect. So I know it works. I'm happy with the code changes. I know it works. I've actually tested it. So we can then now just close this. Nothing special is needed. So if I close the Git pod, so I'm happy with this. So we can review the changes. We can say, looks good. What oh, I meant to click approve, made a mistake there. But it's got many approvals already. And now I can squash and merge it. So we're adding their profile to our link free, which is very similar to Linktree, but an open source version. Hit enter, GitHub action will run and now deploy it to the public environment. So eventually we will see it on the deployed environment. So if I go to link free and repo right at the beginning, you can see linkfree.edihub.org. And eventually this will deploy out. So if we go to GitHub actions, you can see these are running and currently we're running version 50 or 0 0.50.14 and 0 0.50.15 will come out shortly afterwards. You can see it's building now. So all the numbers add up. Now you've seen the demo and you've seen the power. Let me briefly explain a bit more about it and I'm sure it will change your world. 
I know you have at least one, if not two of these situations before and Gitpod is really going to help you. One of the situations you might have been in is you don't have the right tools installed. You don't have Python, you don't have Node, you don't have Mongo, you don't have Docker, or maybe you don't have the right version of something. Maybe you do have Node installed, but it's a newer version, you need an older version or vice versa. It happens to all of us. It's a really common situation. Or another popular common situation, which happens to me all the time. I'm deep in the middle of working on something. I've got all these files changes. I've got the database in a situation where I want it to be so I can you know, play with the code that I'm working on. But now a PR needs to be reviewed and you know, PRs are more important than work in progress because they're closer to getting done. That's a discussion for another time. So what I can do is I can stash my changes, go back to the default branch, reset the database, get the patch from the pull request, you know, all that pain that we all go through all the time and it's been quite normal like that for a while. What if things could be fixed with a single click? As I just showed you, it makes things so much easier. I can keep my local environment or I can keep my Git pod environment as is. And I can just create another Git pod environment by clicking on that pull request. And let me share a little secret with you. If it's easier for you, well, you know it's easier for everyone else as well. And they want to contribute to your project, so make it easier for them. Add Gitpod to your project, which we'll do shortly, and you'll see you can do a few lines of YAML config. We all want those stars, those forks, and those pull requests, and those contributions on our projects. So here is how Gitpod allows you to spin up a fresh ephemeral dev environment for you or for the community so they can get involved in your projects for each tasks. Yes, each task, these temporary environments are then destroyed when you finish doing that individual task. It keeps everything super clean. And plus, for bonus points, can you guess one more thing about it, which I actually do quite love? And it's me, so I'm pretty sure you know what it is. You don't need a clue. Gitpod's open source, no surprises there. Now you hopefully have seen the benefits and you're probably thinking, wow, this must be so difficult to set up and configure for my project. Well, actually it is not. In just a few lines of YAML, you can configure it. So let's get Podify. Yes, that's an actual term. Uh, one of our Eddie Hub repos. And this is a great contribution you can do to the Eddie Hub projects, my repos, and to other repos in the community. But remember, when you raise an issue, explain why you're Git Podify in their repo. Explain the benefits that it's better and easier for other people to contribute to their project. I'm gonna show you how straightforward it is. So this is our support repo. We have a docs folder and the deployed docs are using Doxify. Thank you so much, Nick, for doing this. And this is deployed. So if someone wants to make a contribution to this, they'd have to fork the repo, then do a clone, check they've got Node installed, the right version, NPM installed dependencies, you know the drill. Just so they can check they've made the correct changes. Well, there's actually an easier way as I've been showing you. So let's show you again. So let's get Podify this repo so people can just with one click have the environment and the preview all set up. Go into the Gitpod documentation. It's great that they've got videos and they've got text as well. So let's have a look. So what we need to do first is actually in front of the GitHub repo URL is put gitpod.io forward slash hash. So let's do that. So this is the repo. I'm gonna click at the beginning and I'm gonna paste in what I just said. Hit enter and you'll see Gitpod will start creating it. It's found an existing workspace of mine, so I'm just gonna say create a new one, start from the beginning. You won't get that. I was just having a play a few moments ago. And this probably looks very familiar to you. VS Code starts running. Gitpod gives us an environment to work in. So let's start making some changes. Let's start Gitpodifying this project. So first of all, I actually wanna add to our readme a button. And we're gonna add it to the each pull request as well. We'll get to that in a moment. So what we need to do, I want to add this button for everyone to get involved. So if I do copy this markdown, and I'm gonna to go to the readme, I wanna put it right at the top so people know that they can use Gitpod, paste in, and it says change this part for our URL. So let's go back to our project. Let's grab the URL come back here and paste it in. And this is the exact URL that we used a moment ago to get here. So it's really straightforward and very repeatable. So let's save that. And what do they say in their docs to do next? So next they say, let's help Gitpod understand your repository. So I really like that. So you need a Gitpod YAML file to make it more customizable to your project. And you can do things like this. So we can do GP init and it will initialize 
our project with this config file already, or you can copy and paste it from here. So let's get started. Let's open the terminal. I did that with command J, so that's the Apple command key with J. Now the terminal has opened, let's do GP in it, and it's gonna create this config file for us. Let's reduce the terminal, I don't need that anymore. And the initialized script during the pre-build is gonna be npm install. And then the command we wanna run is gonna be npm start. And if you want multiple commands, you can, as always, like a GitHub Actions and other things, do the pipe and start a line like this. But we don't need that for this, just one command is enough. And if we look at the package JSON, we can see that Doxify is gonna run on port 3200. So I can now just change this one to 3200 and we want to open a preview. So let's hit save. So if we go back to their documentation, I think that's all we need. That's how simple it is. So. It says now commit it, push it, and let's start a new workspace and see the Git pod magic happen. So usually you'd commit this to a branch. I wanna be naughty and, and commit this to main. Don't do what I do. Let's do this. I'm just doing this to keep the video shorter. So let's just check our changes. I'm happy with that. Changes in this file, I'm happy with that too. Okay, let's close the preview. So let's say it's a feature, git podify repo. So let's commit that. Yes, we'll commit it and then we'll sync the changes. Yes, please. Now we sync the changes. If we go to the repo and I refresh, we will see now 11 seconds ago was my commit. We can see we've got a badge up here and uh, we can see that we've got the git pod YAML. So now let me delete the environment I have and all you have to do is actually just close it. So that environment's closed. So now that's deleted, let's click on the git pod icon and see what magic happens. So it's starting up, we're gonna see VS Code, but I'm hoping we're gonna see a preview of the Doxify app as well. This is similar to before, you probably recognize this. Again, I'm not touching anything, this is building itself. Give it a moment to build the environment. And as you can see this time, you've got a terminal that's coming up and you can see that it's running the commands that we had configured in the YAML. And there you go, you've got a preview. This is the preview of the app. So straight away, people can start making changes and start seeing the preview straight away without having to do anything. It's installed dependencies, all the right versions that were needed, and it's just getting to work and going. So you can make it so much easier for you and for people to contribute to your project. And like I said, when you're finished, you can commit to your changes, push them, and just close the environment and build the environment every time. It takes less than 30 seconds. In EddieHub, we have various repos, but another one I wanna show you is the event calendar. And this is deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. And if I open it in a new tab, you'll see it's a calendar with all our community events, my events, your events, everyone else's events. And it's a bit quiet at the moment, we need to add some more. But if you wanted to make a contribution, you have to fork the repo, clone it, install it locally, get it up and running and working to check it works, and then commit it and push it, all those things that you know back. So I wanna make some changes to this, and we can see it's been already been Git podified. So if I just click this, it's gonna open in a new tab, and I can start adding events to this calendar straight away and see what it looks like without having to install or set up anything. So this is the actual deployed preview one, so let me close that, because we're gonna preview it in our Git pod environment. The event I'll probably add is we do have a live stream tonight. So by the time you're watching this video, the live stream happened probably a couple of weeks ago, but I'm gonna add it and you're gonna see how easy and straightforward it is. So it's doing our NPM install at the moment. Now we're starting the application. And you can see today is Mark the 17th. Let's put an event on tonight. It's gonna to be 2 p.m., 4 p.m. GMT. So let's add it. So what we need to do, if I make this a bit bigger and go to the public directory and go to data, and we want an event for tonight. So here we go, so we can add an event. Let's have a look at an example one already. So we've got public speaking, community call, Eddie. So let's open one of these and have a look what it looks like. So it's a type and it's the author and the URL to the event and the start and end time and description. So we can create a new one of these. So here we go, I can say it's, this is Eddie Jowd. This is gonna be a YouTube live and the date is gonna be the 17th. So we will say 17th of the 12th, 2021. And it's a JSON file. So now we've created this file. And what we can do is we can copy this and put it into this one and we'll just update the information. So it's gonna be YouTube, and it's gonna be, the author can be Eddie Hub, and URL of the author can be Eddie Hub as well. 
well, actually maybe just to be consistent, I should be do Eddie Jald. And then here I can do my website. And then the URL of the actual event, I need to go grab it. So it's gonna be on my YouTube channel. Got some awesome guests on this, so really looking forward to it. And let's add the URL to the event so people can find it on the calendar. So here's the title, just grab it from YouTube. And then in the description, there we go. And the date is gonna be the 12th month. And it's gonna be the 17th. And it's actually gonna be 4 p.m. So that's 16 GMT. There we go. And then the end time is probably gonna be two hours later. So let me just copy and paste that to make it a bit easier. And we can say 18. Save. So now I've hit save. There you go, you can see I've added it and now it's appeared and it's appearing on the 18th because for my time, it's actually gonna be the 18th. It's gonna be 12 a.m., it's gonna be midnight for me. That is correct and so now we can just commit it just like before. So I'm not gonna commit the lock file. Make sure you only commit files that you may have made changes to, don't commit everything. So all I wanna do in this case is to commit this file. So we can say it's a feature. Actually, we'll just put it in as a fix. I don't want to bump the version too much. So we'll put it into feature and we'll say Eddie Jald live stream. And I'm gonna do a commit and then we're gonna sync the changes and then GitHub Action will deploy this to the live version. And that's it. That's how simple it is to make changes to other open source projects and just close. Done, I'm happy with that. So if I refresh this, you will see it says 17 days ago, we're now we'll say 23 seconds ago, and the GitHub action will run so that it'll eventually deploy version 0.75 to the app. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I go live and post a video. I really enjoy geeking out with you, so come and head over to our Discord channel, link in the description below, so we can chat between live streams and video. I really enjoy having calls with you, geeking out with you and seeing what projects you're working on. Let me know in the comments below what projects you are working on, but don't put a link to GitHub because unfortunately YouTube will remove it. Just put the username or the organization forward slash the repo name and I can go have a look. I'll see you in Discord.